Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about data transformation. Now in the past we've talked about uh, data visualization and how it can help lead to insights, but a majority of the time our data is not in that nice and clean format that we'd like, so we need to get that data into the proper formatting. So today we're going to look at uh, our NYC database. So NYC flights uh, 13 and we're also going to be needing the tidyverse um, so let's take a quick uh, look at the NYC flights data set let me clear this out a little bit so the NYC flights uh, uh, data set actually uh, contains uh, about 300,000 flights data departing from uh, New York City in 2013. So and this data uh, comes from the US Bureau of Labor uh, Statistics um, and so you can also find information if you hit the question mark flights Oops. So we can see uh, all of that information uh, that we'd like is here, all right, as well as uh, very variable uh, descriptions, etc. So, and we'll be maybe referencing that a little bit later on. Now, the next thing that we want to look at is uh, talking about what we actually see when we look at this tibble. Okay, so notice it's here that it's called the tibble. So we have uh, three hundred thousand um, uh, plus uh, rows. We have nineteen columns. Now we also see around here that we have our uh, column names, as well as uh, an, uh, I guess, uh, an estimate, okay, of what uh, what tidy uh, the tidyverse, okay, and uh, Redar actually believe that these items are. So, for example, 2013, it says it's an integer, um, and then we have here, for example, uh, departure delay. It says it's a double, so it believes it's maybe a float or it has a decimal point in there. Uh, now, most of these are also integers and doubles, but if we look down um, a little bit closely down at the bottom here, we see that um, origin is a character, tail number is a character, um, hour, uh, time hour is a DTTM, which is for date time. All right, and so there's also maybe a few others that we would have uh, later on in some other data sets, and some of those are logicals, okay, or those are Booleans, true and false. We have factors, which is how R represents these categorical variables, and we have also just a standard date instead of a date time, and that's just for dates. So we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of functions from dplyr today. So we can question mark dplyr. Okay, and we'll be talking about uh, particularly about the grammar of data manipulation. Um, and we're going to spend a majority of our time today actually just on a few um, a few uh, pieces. All right, and I may split this up into a couple episodes depending on uh, how long everything is going to take today. So uh, first off, we're going to talk about filtering because we want to be able to filter out and pick out observations by their values. Um, and we'll also later on we'll maybe talk about reordering rows. And picking things by their names or their columns, okay, with select, and then uh, we'll probably have a special um, uh, series on uh, mutating data, okay, or creating new uh, data from existing values, and also summarizing and getting some descriptive statistics. So the first one, let's look at filtering, and we'll filter out the NYC data. So filter in and of itself. Um, Filter it takes our data frame name, okay, and then it also takes uh, some variable names uh, with uh, with some sort of equivalent statement, okay. Uh, so let's say that we want month, we want to grab January, and then we also want our day to equal maybe the tenth. And so now we grab all observations, okay, all rows that are where the month is equivalent to one and day is equivalent to ten. And this will give us plenty of uh, data to play with. This is that nice subset of data. We can also, in turn, grab uh, and save all of this data into a variable name. So we want uh, 
flight. Whoops. Uh, we want. I'm trying to do this in a different format than I'm used to. But uh, so flight month is equal to one. Uh, day is equal to one in this instance. And this will save this. You can see that this save this in a separate data frame up here. We can view this if we want to, but it won't take time for that right now. Um, now, it's that's nice and all, but we didn't actually get to see our output in this instance. We may, from time to time, want to be able to see our data as we're also saving the variable. So let's grab maybe um, August um, 8th. Okay, so uh, we want to filter the data. We want our flights data. We want the month is going to be equal to the 8th, and then the day is going to be equivalent to so now to notice now, since we wrapped everything in uh, these parentheses, it'll automatically print out, and it'll also uh, create an object for us uh, that we can call back later on. Uh, and this is very useful, particularly when you're wanting to kind of save your output as you're going along, as well as visualize it, and it, it's just a little bit faster. Um, so currently we're doing comparisons. So we're, we've been doing, uh, specifically we've been doing equivalence. So using the equal sign, we also have the not equals to, we also have greater than, we have uh, less than, we have uh, less than or equal to, we have greater than or equal to. Okay, and then uh, besides these, okay, and again, we can use these in any way, but a big issue that uh, happens a lot, okay, so let's do, we wanna grab our flights. Now people have a tendency that this is the main uh, issue that always comes up and students are always asking me about what's happening, why isn't my code working? Well, they're doing something like month is equal to one. Now notice here, an error is popping up. Okay, we have an error message uh, that there's a problem with filter and it's the first input, okay, and or input one technically. Okay, so that's this one right here. Um, and again, this will, these are usual common, this is such a common issue that it says, uh, this usually means that you've used equal sign instead of equivalent sign. Okay, did you mean equivalence okay so it actually tells you and gives you an example of how to fix that so you can go back up and fix fix your issue and it will run for you okay so let's clear that out so other types of equivalence okay we can we can check all different types of things but there's also a common problem we're going to encounter with equivalence is uh, usually floating point numbers uh, so we can do something like uh, square root of two, uh, and we want to make this, um, what do we want to do with this? Uh, to the two, okay? Well, this says it's two. Now, if we also do, uh, we want to do a square root of two is maybe equivalent to two. Notice that we get false because there are some uh, floating point potentially numbers in here um, because of a little bit of computational issues okay now what we can do to test those out if you know that they're supposed to be near so you can say near uh, oh, let me actually just do it this way let me do everything up closing bracket and then we do near oh whoops so here I forgot here that this actually needs to be a comma in this instance and this will give us true so this is actually giving us a near approximation um, and again, because com computers use a finite precision uh, arithmetic, okay, so we basically need to know that every number that you see is an approximation. Um, so instead of relying on equivalence, okay, whenever we're doing computations, we need to probably start using near. Uh, the next part uh, is talking about logical operators. So logical operators are um, and, or, uh, which in when we're coding with this is the ampersand sign and then the or which we use is the pipe operator okay the pipe operator is located above the uh, return key so and oh and one more is we also have the not operator uh, so which is the exclamation point um, so one thing that we can do with this is uh, look up two different uh, values at the same time so uh, filter we want flights and let's say we want our month is equal to October or the month is equal to November. This will give us all of our months that are equal to October or November. Um, 
and then let's also give maybe another one okay another way that you can also do this all right so this this you have to actually type out month is equivalent to October or month is equivalent to November one other way that we can do this is uh, using the in uh, shorthand so uh, let's do filter uh, flights and we want month month in and then we create a vector of 10 11 all right now this is this is I always find this extremely useful because sometimes I actually want to save this as a separate list or a separate vector uh, that I would use and I can call that multiple times throughout the analysis or maybe even um, if I'm saving this in a markdown document I can uh, actually input in this as a parameter and it would actually solve everything for me um, so please keep that in mind whenever you're doing this. I also believe it has makes a little bit more um, logical sense when you're reading it. Uh, now let's go on to looking at uh, using the not operator. So let's say that, for example, uh, let, me, let me write out a note here. Okay, so let's assume that we want to find uh, flights... Uh, that uh, were not delayed, okay, by more than uh, two hours. So if we look at our flights data again, really quickly, okay. Now we notice we have departure time. Now we here we have departure delay, and we also have uh, arrival delay. And notice here that this is two, four, two. Uh, 11, tw uh, 20, 33, and again we have negative numbers, negative 18, negative 25. No, can you notice something here that those are those are definitely not hours; those are minutes. So we need to make sure that whenever we're uh, uh, conducting our comparison or wanting to check on these uh, variables and values, that we're actually using minutes. We're using the correct um, the correct structure in our questioning. So we want to filter. Uh, flights and let's say that it's not and so we have our arrival delay that is greater than and again two hours and minutes is 120 or our departure delay is uh, greater than 120 and now there's one other way that we could do the same thing okay so we can filter uh, flights and then we want arrival delay and we wanted it less than or equal to 120 or a departure delay and that is also less than or equal to 120 okay so this is using our conditional execution now we could uh, remember when now inside of R okay we usually use the ampersand which is these two ampersands or two pipe operators for or but inside of the tidyverse, we only use a singular ampersand for and and a singular uh, pipe operator for or. Now the next thing that we would usually need to filter out is missing values. Oops. Okay. And so we want our uh, missing uh, values. And this is usually uh, denoted by an NA. Okay, and this is, again, so uh, this represents uh, not availables. Uh, so I'll just say, I usually have a tendency just to say NAND values. Uh, and they are contagious. Okay, so what do we mean by contagious? So let's say uh, NAN is uh, greater than 5. NAN, okay. Uh, NAN is equivalent to 5. NAN. Uh, uh, NAN plus 100. NAN. So notice, any time we're trying to do arithmetic, it is it will, NAND will just latch on and will grab onto it. So that is going to cause us a lot of trouble. Okay, and again, something that can also be very uh, troublesome and confusing for students in the first time they're looking at it is if we look at NAND values and we check the equivalence to NAND value, we get NAND. Now, one way to actually uh, kind of take care of uh, this is maybe by Kind of giving it a, log a, lo a logical story that we can kind of grab onto in our mind. So let's say that 
um, we want to compare two things that we don't know about. So um, let x uh, be uh, my weight, okay, uh, and let y be uh, my uh, wife's weight, okay. And again, I'm going to give fake numbers because I don't want to get in trouble. So uh, let's say x is going to be my weight, and I'm going to say this in kilograms, so I'm around 90 kilograms. Uh, y, my wife, and let's say that she's around 40 kilograms. So then we want to be able, uh, now we can compare these, right? So x is uh, greater than y is going to give us true. y is uh, uh, greater than x, again, is going to give us false. Now, how could we do this then if we don't know people's weights? So let's say we actually don't know my weight, and we do not know my wife's weight. Okay, just an example. Okay, uh, so then how are we going to compare these? All right, so are, are we the same weight? So is x equivalent to y? No. So notice, because we do not know what each person's weight would be, this would give us a name, because again, if we don't know what this value is and we don't know what this value is, there's no logical way that we could actually compare the two. Um, now, what is helpful though is we can determine if something is a NAND value. So we can say is uh, NA, all right, would give an X, this would give us true. Now, let's say that uh, we now say that X is equivalent to zero, and we do is NA of X. This is going to give us false because again, now it does contain a value. So what happens then if we are wanting to look at uh, data frames that actually contain missing values? All right, so let's just say x, c is going to be 100, nan, uh, two, 300. And so let's, if we look at df, we notice here that we have that these are doubles. And again, we have uh, 100, we have nan, we have 300. Now, uh, one of the best things about uh, using things in the tidyverse is that they take a lot of uh, care of a lot of things behind the scenes. So if we want to filter our data and we say that we want uh, x is greater than uh, 90, well, what happens? This automatically will get rid of the NAND values. It will exclude false, it will always exclude false values because again, Notice here, everything is true here, but maybe uh, let me let me turn this to 200. So notice now we get 300, okay? So 300's here. So if the value is false, all right, so is 100 uh, greater than 200? No, so that's false. And a NAND value, it is going to ignore them just as it ignored the NAND values here. Uh, so that ends this section on filtering. And uh, we'll come back uh, in the next section and we'll start talking about uh, using uh, a range, okay? And I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching.